Right, everybody, now, everybody give Betty Spink a massive round of applause. just for one reason, but there's lots of different reasons why. So next, I want to ask, is your business working? Show of hands if your business is working as you see. <coughs> yeah, a few, maybe a little bit. Okay, so are you being distracted? Yes. <laughs> yeah? Are you being distracted? Now, it might be that your business is working beautifully and you are more than happy, you are achieving what you want from this business. And if so, that's absolutely fantastic. Switch your ears off because I don't want to talk to you guys, yeah? But it might be that you are being a little bit distracted. Are you using all the tools that are available to you? No. Now, you just heard Mike and Michelle talk about the catalogues. Do <laughs> I have eight catalogue customers, so I am online, online through and through. So I'm not using all the tools available to me because I'm not building a catalogue customer base. However, I still do use the catalogues. So if your business isn't working as you want it to work, why isn't it? Are you getting the results you're wanting or are you using excuses? Because there's lots of different reasons why your business isn't working, but is it, an, is it an excuse? And I'll go into that a little bit more detail in a second. Now, just a little bit about my background. I joined uh, Network Marketing back, back in May 2012. Now, the other day I was sat, <laughs> sat there and I went, I've only been doing Network Marketing for a couple of years. And then I was like, hmm, 2012, where's that time gone? Crazy. The reason I joined Network Marketing is because I wanted something different. Now, I'm a paediatric nurse, I work full time, I've got two kids, my bills have always been paid, but I've never had that bit extra. Gentlemen at the back, you know, you said about wanting the luxuries of life. That was me, yeah? Bills were paid, the kids had what they wanted, but I never had nothing for me, and that's what I wanted. This picture is my kids in 2012. They have totally changed <laughs> compared to that photo. But, you know, they had what they wanted, but they didn't have holidays. It wasn't until two years ago when we went to Turkey, last year, mm -hmm. year before, year. that my kids had got on a plane and been on holiday. They've never, ever been, and they are now 12 and 13. At this time, I was also in a very, very unhealthy relationship. Um, Mentally, physically, we're not going to go into details, but it was a very, very unhealthy relationship that I needed to get out of. And as I've already said, I didn't have anything other than going to work, feeding my kids, going to work, feeding my kids, going to work, and feeding my kids. And like I said, I wanted that a little bit different. Now, what I did have is I had my own self-worth. I had the belief that I could change. I could get out of that unhealthy relationship. I could have them things that I wanted to have. And that were my goals. They were my goals. Although I didn't know that at the time, it's only from obviously doing personal development and changing as a person <coughs> that actually they were the goals that I had set at the time. And obviously I had my friends and family to help me with that as well. So just going back to that quote, again, if you want something in life you've never had, you will do have to do something which you've never done before. 
Now, we don't mention this too often, but uh, I'm going to refer to it today. In our previous business, I was hitting goals. I got to gold within seven months of joining that, that network marketing business. I went across the stage with the gold dis distributor. We're hitting incentives. Um, we got the, um, I've even forgotten what it was Trips. called. Trips. Where we got free drinks. Directors, Directors Club. Directors Club, there we go. We got the Directors Club. Just before what happened happened, me and Kev went to Vegas and we had an absolutely fantastic time, all paid for, and actually the first time I've been abroad in such a long, long time. I've not been abroad from being a child. And also, the Bevink was created, and that's mine and Kev's team, we call ourselves the Bevink team, um, and the hashtag learn, develop, and grow was born. However, overnight, as the majority of the people sat in this room know, it went, disappeared out of our lives. And I sat there for, I want to say maybe two weeks, something like that. I'm bored, I want something to do. I'm missing people, you know, what is it that I can do? I can't carry on just being that, working as a paediatric nurse and feeding the kids. I want them things back. So in May 2018, we decided to join Oriflame with Gavin. And basically, I forget who said it today, but someone said, Jane, I don't know if it was you yourself about said about sending um, the catalogue link to people so they can when you sign in uh, before you sign in them up, you're sending that link. And that's exactly what Gavin did with us. Gavin sent the um, link to the catalogue and we had a look at that. Now I don't wear a lot of makeup. I never have done. I wear more makeup now than I have ever done in the past before. Richard nodded into your head. You're like, yeah, you too. I like wearing makeup. Um, but you know, had Gavin not sent that, had you know, I actually thought it were candles. You remember the yeah, yeah. No, I'm not selling candles. What do I want to do that for? So had he not sent that, I may not have never joined. That's a really, really important tool that Jane's using to get people interested as well. We've got great customers, you know, we already had, um, I'll say a small customer base, which as I've said, eight catalog customers, you know, it's not, it's not a great deal, but we've already got great customers and great online customers, a great team, and we knew we could earn a great income from that as well. And these pictures are just a couple of pictures <coughs> from our team at the Oriflame Showcase, at the TBC, and just showing what an absolutely fantastic time that we had with Thea there on stage, and I'm just going to say we scrub up quite well, <laughs> would you not agree? It's a bit of a dark photo, so that's not very clear on there, but absolutely we're making great memories with Oriflame. However, then I came a bit of a roadblock, <coughs> okay? A couple of months ago, I hit a bit of a roadblock, and I nearly quit. Yeah, been sat with Jill and Carol this morning and Mandy in our car on the way down here and I told them a few a few bits of information, shall we say, which we've not shared with our team. But I did nearly quit. Now the reason for that is I was having a very difficult time at home. Personal reasons, you know, I'm not going to go into any detail or anything, but with myself I was having that difficult time at home with the children and one thing and another. I'd been promoted at work. Now you might think, well, that's a great thing, Becky. And absolutely it was. I went for the interview, I got the job, I never expected to get the job, but I did. But that then meant my focus was on my new promotion. In all honesty, I was fed up of seeing other people's success. Well, why is it that our team aren't getting recognised? Why is it that we're not getting recognised? What's happening to this? Why is it everybody else is having this success? I can't be bothered to do that anymore because I'm sick of seeing it. And these were the thoughts that were going around in my head. I thought I was missing out on having fun. You see other people having this success, you're seeing their photos, their celebrations, but why is it that they can have fun and we can't or I can't? And I got distracted. All these things were distracting me from building our business. And because of that, I lost all confidence in myself. I lost all the confidence to do what I'd been doing and carrying on building what we'd already been. So then I had to make a choice. 
do I quit or don't I? And the whole answer that was, I thought a difficult choice, but now actually I see it wasn't. Because I had to think about them quotes that, we'd, that I've already mentioned, and this is another one from Jim Rowan. If you really want to do something, you'll find a way. If not, you'll find an excuse. So if I just go back to this list, difficult time at home. Raise your hands if you have a difficult time at home from time to time. <laughs> Majority of the room, yeah? Have you ever got a promotion at work or got a new job? Put your hand up. Yeah. Fed up of seeing other people's <coughs> success? <laughs> Thinking that you're missing out on the fun. These are all just, yeah, me too, Colin. <laughs> These are basically, they're just excuses. And the thing is, is you can have results or you can have excuses, but you can't have both. And when you feel like quitting, you have to think about why you started. What was your why? Them things that people have been shouting out, the things that I showed on the screen at the start. What is your why? So, I'm going to go back to my favourite quote that I've shown quite a few times already. If you want something in life you've never had, you'll have to do something you've never done. And you have to keep doing that day in, day out. So what did I do? I went back to post-it. I decided that I weren't quitting. Am I stupid? Am I really gonna give up on what we've got our hands on? This gold mine that we've like, you know, like you said, Michelle, really think about what it was. So that night, I went back to posting. And that night alone, I sold 50 quid of products. Just in one night. I gave eight books to customers the following day. Remember I said I've got them eight catalogue customers. I gave them books out and I got 80 pounds of orders. So the average is 10 pounds a catalogue. And I sent follow-up messages, review posts, competitions. I do goodie bags, so you heard Michelle say about um, 125 pounds of free gifts that they get. What I do with our free gifts is I do goodie bags for five pounds and 10 pounds. I, I did eight 10 pound ones, eight five pound ones as well. Yeah, so anyway, sure. I heard over 100 quid People didn't know what were in these goodie bags. All that I did is put all the stuff that I had on a table, took a photo of it, it was a group picture of the photo, put that up on my Facebook post, on my Facebook group, with a post to say these products are gonna be in the bag, five pound and 10 pound, who want one? And they sold like that. Absolutely amazing. Customers that I'd already had, and brand new customers as well. So what did that do to my confidence? <coughs> straight up, turn the heating up and up it went. Now it's really, really easy to get distracted. It's really, really easy to have these excuses. But it's also really easy just to get on with it, just to do it, just to do what you do best, whether that's online, offline, mixture of both. Think about what it is that you want from this business. So the moral of my story, and I do apologise if this offends anyone, but I'm going to say it anyway, is shit happens. What's most important is how we deal with it that matters. It's your mindset of how you're going to move forward. I could have very easily have quit <coughs> and lost all of this. On average, we're earning around anything between sort of 600 and 900 pounds every three weeks. Why would I want to give up on that? You know, it's, it's crazy, isn't it? Crazy. So I just want to give a few top online retail tips, okay? Just show of hands who does online. One of us, a few people, fabulous. So, so posting daily, just like the catalogs, you have to be consistent with what you're doing. If you aren't consistent, you are not <coughs> going to build an online business. It's as simple as that. So in terms of your timeline, so this is your own timeline, your own profile page, you have to remember the correct ratios of 70, 20 and 10. You have to remember that Facebook is an online social media platform. So you have to be social on it. So 70% has to be personal. 
Now that might be you're out for the night um, at the pub, or you're walking the dog, or you're out with the kids, or you're taking some pictures of flowers, I don't know, whatever. Whatever it is that you like doing, it has to be personal. Your hobbies, anything like that. 20% has to be business related. But that is not selling. So it might be nail varnish, for instance. You take, you've just done your nails, you take a picture of your nails painted and you share it and say, I love this colour, this is my new favourite colour. But you are not selling it, it's indirect. So you are advertising your business indirectly. And then 10% needs to be about selling or recruiting. So basically one in 10 posts are selling product or recruiting people. <coughs> On your timeline, if you just go hard sell, hard sell, hard sell, people are gonna unfollow you. They're not gonna necessarily unfriend you because you can then work out. If Sheila unfriends me today, and I go to look for Sheila's profile tomorrow, I'll be like, well, she's unfriended me. And that's because she's sick of seeing my posts. But you can now be unfollowed and people don't know that you're being unfollowed. So nobody is seeing the posts that you're putting out there if they are unfollowing you. So make sure you are not annoying your friends and family and work colleagues and people that you have on Facebook. Stick to these ratios. Mm. Who's got a, their own Facebook selling group? Perfect. So within that group, you need to be posting consistently every single day. She hangs her head in shame. Three posts every single day. I'm getting back there. I'm getting there. Yeah? Three brand new products every single day. But what's most important about these, these um, pictures that you're putting in there is make them personal to you. Create your own content. We've just been discussing this in the break about the Oriflame Social. It's brilliant and I really see the logic behind it and it is really going to move forward once it's been fully built. But what's happening at the moment is because Oriflame Social has got suggested messages, everybody's sharing the same content. Facebook pick up on that and although Facebook aren't necessarily banning people at the moment, they are not showing your content if everyone's doing the same content. It works on pixels. So on this screen here, if I was to have a picture on, well, even as, as words, that has got thousands and thousands and thousands of pixels within that. If we all shared this screen on Facebook, that would alert them, and then they're not going to show that content to anybody. You're not necessarily going to get a ban, but they aren't going to see the content that you're sharing. Does that make sense? Yeah? So although I love Oriflame Social, and I really understand the basics behind it, and, and I think, you know, in future we're going to do really, really successful things with it, People have to be mindful of how they're using that and try to avoid using the suggested messages. Create your own content, be yourself, yeah? Everybody's different. With the personalities that Gavin did earlier, use your own personality to create that content. External groups. I don't know how many external groups I'm in, literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, and I can share to them external groups are quite a high amount of posts because I am active on Facebook. Now we used to stand at the front of the group and say to people you need to be posting this amount of posts every single day, three times a day, on a morning or an afternoon and an evening. We can no longer do that because Facebook pick up on it. So what we're saying now is it depends on how active you are to how many posts you can get away with doing. So just be mindful if you're active on there, if you're tagging in places, so, so girls at the back, Mandy, Jill and Carol, they've all tagged that they're here today because that's a tick to be active on Facebook. Yeah? Whenever you go anywhere, tag that you're there or take a picture and share it. That's all adding up to your Facebook reach. And Marketplace, who uses Marketplace? Like seriously, what can you not get on Marketplace anymore? Oh. Literally, you need something, you can find it on there. So again, it's about using all the tools that are available to us. Follow-up messages. So this is a, um, the message that I send to my customers. You heard Michelle say about they, they have the book um, with their catalogue customers. I have an Excel spreadsheet. 
I agree, you don't need everything that that crazy person does. Yeah, literally on my Excel spreadsheet, it has my customer's name, the link to their Facebook Messenger, and when they last ordered. And I think I do have what they ordered last, but it's in terms of a foundation or a nail varnish or whatever, you know, just so I can personalize some of my follow-up messages some of the time. So I literally, I open up my Excel spreadsheet, I click on all the Facebook links, and this will open them all up at the tab at the top, and it takes me less than 10 minutes to message, if this is about 35 customers that I've got on there. And I copy and paste, and then change the message around a little bit to personalize it to that customer. So hi, hope you're well, I was happy with your last order of the foundation or the nail varnish or whatever. I just wanted to let you know that I'm placing an order next Friday if there's anything you'd like from our new catalogue, put the catalogue link in there. It saves the person having to find it. Also, we have some amazing offers of, over on our Facebook group. Put the link to your Facebook group. because All that customer has to do is click the link and it's going to take them directly to your group. They're not having to search for it. With up to 65% off some of our fab products. If there's anything you'd like, just drop me a message. So really important that you are following up your online customers just like you would do with your catalogue customers. Reviews. Now, Gavin, I know obviously we spoke about a lot about this in the Terrier group at the moment, but I just wanted to mention it again because how successful it has been. It's been fantastic. So I don't know what made me think about doing it, but I just put a post out there asking for some reviews on this fantastic toothpaste that we sell. Now I, I made it sound like it was personally me giving the discount to my customers. I didn't say Oriflame have done this on a discounted price, I just made it sound like it was, it was me that was reducing the price of this item in exchange for a review of this product. So, okay, peeps, I need your help. I've been asked to collect some reviews for our Optimus System A Crystal White Toothpaste. So, I am offering this toothpaste for only $1.95, recommended retailer price £6. If you'd like to help by ordering one, please drop me a message. I then got 10 customers order this toothpaste. So, when, they, to, when, the, to, when the toothpaste came in the delivery, I took a picture of the toothpaste in the bottom of the box, nothing fancy as you can see, literally just took that picture. Lots of toothpaste go into customer with 65% off and it's on offer for just $1.95 in exchange for honest reviews. Anyone else interested, I have five more spaces for reviews for this fantastic crystal white toothpaste, drop me a message. So this time, I've said I've only got five spaces left. That gives it a sense of urgency that people need to come to me as soon as possible to fill these five spaces. From that, I got a further six orders, okay? Then them customers don't know that I'd only got the five, okay? It just gives it that sense of urgency. So I've got 16 customers from a two pound toothpaste just by putting it on my profile. You can see here some of the comments. So Hannah, me, I'll review it. She's an old customer but hasn't ordered for a while. Hi Becca, can I have some more information on the toothpaste please? Hi Becca, just seen your status about the toothpaste, would I be able to have one? This customer, Caitlin, brand new customer. I message of course, whereabouts do you live please? Okay, because obviously if they're at distance, I'm going to post it to them, so we have to make sure that they're happy with that cost. This customer lives three doors away from my house. <laughs> Never ordered from me before, I didn't know if I'm Adam, no idea. Crazy. Um, I'll give it a try, wanting to try white new toothpaste, if it sounds good and worth a try. So you can see these are the messages or comments that I was getting on there. And it's because once you've got a couple of people commenting, that then encourages more people to comment. They don't want to miss out on an offer. Also, Facebook Lives, um, you can either demo products on there, you can open your delivery on there, whatever you most feel comfortable with. And make sure you're given a catalogue with every single order. Like Michelle said, make sure you are prepared and you've got the next, cat next campaign's catalogue. 
because if that customer has just ordered from ca Campaign 5, you aren't going to then give them Campaign 5's catalogue again. Be, in a, be prepared, give them Campaign 6, and you're going to generate the orders from that as well. Also, know your customers. Pretty much like Michelle said. It's really, really important to know your customers. We have lots of products that come on offer all the time. So I know Elaine, she used to remember be my old boss at work, she always orders the five in one mascara. So that's that's literally all she ever orders is the mascara. So I noticed it was on offer, so I dropped her a message, hi Elaine, just to let you know the mascara you have is back on offer at the moment for £5.95. If you'd like another one ordering, <coughs> ordering with my next order next week, yes please. Now if I didn't know what she ordered, if I didn't send her that message, she wouldn't have necessarily known that it was on offer. I would have lost out on an order. So that's why it's really important to know we are customers. And I'll just leave you with our top tip, which is hashtag LDG. And this is sort of our motto within our team. You can ask anyone in our team about our motto. And it's all about learning, developing and growing. Not only learning the basics of the business and expanding your knowledge on the business, but learning about yourself, build yourself, develop yourself. Do the personal development and develop your mindset. Develop your team's mindset. Develop your team. And all that is just going to come into place and you're just going to grow as an individual and you're going to grow your business. And I believe that's me done. Well done.